Welcome to Computer Orientation. So thank you again to all of you who have volunteered to uh, fill in the void that I have left behind this year. I'm going to record a couple notes here as I go through the PowerPoint with some of the key things that I like to stress and mention for each slide. Um, if it's helpful, I could always kind of type this out as well, but I just was trying to be super efficient and quick. So first thing I do after I get everybody checked in with attendance, make sure everybody has their computer, is um, I do a brief introduction of who I am. So feel free to do some brief introductions. It doesn't have to take a long time. It doesn't have to be icebreakers. They'll do plenty of icebreakers in the weeks to come with freshman orientation and just first days of school. So I never placed a lot of emphasis on that, but I also went through some of the ground rules. I, I, I set the tone that they really need to pay very close attention during this session. And I assured them that we will be taking some breaks. So it's not like you're gonna be talked at for three consecutive hours, uh, but that they need to be listening very closely and the minute they fall behind on any steps that we're doing, instruct them to just put their hand in the air and someone will be over to help them. The worst part that I've experienced after doing this for several years is when there's a kid that is too shy or they miss a part and then they just sit there and they fall so far behind because a lot of what we do in this orientation is sequential and it builds upon previous steps so it's really important to make sure everybody's on the same screen at the same time doing the same things so i emphasize that to them and try to put them at ease try to make them feel welcome and so on the first thing we do when we open up their computer is um they're going to log in and uh, i'm going to kind of jump ahead actually to slide five here when they log into their computer, I might even rearrange the order of these slides before I send this to you because things have changed over the years. Their username will be last name, first initial, middle initial at mercymacaulay.org. Again, this is something that we kind of take for granted, but most people have a hard time spelling Macaulay. Like they really do. And a big common mistake that people do with our email is they do .com and it's .org. Org. So just be mindful of that. Um, the password for all incoming freshmen is Wolves2028. It's all spelled together with a capital W. You might have one or two students in this orientation, though, that are not freshmen because we have a couple of transfers. So if you have a student that is not a freshman, her password is just the same as her graduation year. Okay, so it might be 2027 or 2026. So just be mindful of that. Um, but they'll log in like that first, and then we will have them change their password to something that they want to keep it at. Okay, so uh, when we're changing the password, I encourage them to make sure that it is strong enough, unique, but not difficult to remember. Um, and this is the password that they're going to use to log into everything, to their OneDrive, to their email, to every Microsoft product, and so on. So it's important that they are uh, picking a good password there. Uh, let's see, what's next? Then I kind of give them a tour a little bit about their computer. Uh, I encourage them that you don't just press and hold the power button to turn it off and on. You actually would go through the steps of going to the start button, selecting power, restart, shutdown. I, I talked a little bit about how important it is to restart the computer weekly. That's when updates happen. That's when all the good stuff happens on their computers and keeps them working nicely. The next thing that I mentioned to them is how critical it is to understand the difference between a left click and a right click. Our laptops have a left click mouse feature and a right click, but most students coming to our school have been using Chromebooks 
and they do not have a left click and a right click. They can click anywhere on the mouse pad. So I, I spend a significant amount of time emphasizing that because nine out of 10 of times the problems that we will encounter in this orientation and throughout the year for that matter is because the student is clicking on the right side of the mouse pad and they should be clicking on the left side. It is so important. Um, so we talk a little bit about that for a while because it's, it's just so critical that they are clicking in the right area of their, their mouse pad. Talking about the Wi-Fi at Mercy Macaulay, uh, they never, ever, 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 ever want to be on Guest Wolves, only Mercy Macaulay. Um, in fact, sometimes I don't even know if we will have Guest Wolves available all the time. That really is for guests and not, not for your computer. Uh, they cannot actively, quote unquote, log in to Mercy Macaulay's internet because it's a password that is already built into their computer and nobody knows it except for our systems administrators. So uh, that's the one they need to be on. And uh, I talk a little bit about how to check which Wi-Fi they're on. I talk about going down to the bottom of their computer and actually clicking on um, the Wi-Fi button and making sure that they're actually connected to Mercy Macaulay. And that's essential. So then after we've logged in, we've changed our password, we want to get them into OneDrive first. Um, I believe the best way to do this is to have them open up Microsoft Edge. And um, again, you can use any browser, but it's really helpful to start with everybody doing the same exact thing because it tends to help. So the first time they open up Edge, it's probably going to give them a whole bunch of tutorials and prompts. And click here, next, next, next. So just bear with that. Just know that that might take a minute. But once you actually have access to that web browser, from there, you're going to have them type. Let's see if I can get this going online. Uh, Office.com. and it'll open up Microsoft Office. And again, it's gonna ask them to enter that password that they just created back when you were creating passwords. Uh, so take a moment to have them type in that password. It's no longer gonna be Wolves 2028 because they will have changed it. Um, and yes, we wanna stay signed in. Once they have um, access to Office, Let's see if I can move this little screen here. Yeah, right up here. In these buttons, this is how we can get into OneDrive. They may have OneDrive on the side here, but just in case, go to the nine dots, go to OneDrive, and it should, again, prompt them for that password again. And yes, we want to stay logged in. So this is how they get into their OneDrive and they're in. So at this point, I take a little bit of time to talk about how the OneDrive is the Google Drive, basically. Um, as I said, most students come to our school from Google Schools, and that's not a bad thing. We are a Microsoft school though, and I try to emphasize to them that whatever you can do with your Google computer, you can do with your Microsoft computer. If you had a Google Drive, now you have a OneDrive. If you did Google Slides, now you have PowerPoint. Like it's it's all there. Uh, it's gonna be fine. It's just a little bit of an adjustment. So once they have their OneDrive, I go through explaining how they can set up a folder for each one of the years they will be here at Mercy Macaulay, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. From there, um, I have them open up their freshman folder and I have them create a folder for English because I think every single freshman takes English. Um, so I just have them create that. 
Uh, and then I explained that during the first week of computer literacy, their teacher will be explaining how to create a folder for each class that they take their freshman year. But I also take a moment to emphasize while we're doing this how important it is to stay organized with your files. Don't just click save and hope that it goes somewhere into the cloud. You have to be very intentional about where you save your files and how you, how you stay organized. Um, Okay, so then we talked about password. So they just created this password and they're going to be creating a lot of passwords. So this is the point in our um, orientation that I tried to explain how to create a, uh, a spreadsheet, if you will, with all their passwords on it in Excel because Excel is a nice spreadsheet and it's a great place to keep them. So I have them go down to the bottom search bar. I have them type in Excel. And mine opens up, but theirs probably won't. Theirs might ask them to log in again. And that's fine. And then I just open up a blank workbook. And again, this is a nice place to pause when you're leading the orientation. Make sure everybody's screen looks like this. you know. And I'll have my screen projected up on the big view board. And I, I make sure that everybody is at the same point. It takes a little longer. In fact, if you only had like three kids in the orientation session, this orientation would probably take less than an hour. The reason it takes three hours is because you're constantly walking around the room, making sure everybody's at the same place at the same time and so on. So I have them create a... Um, a password sheet so it might say like my computer and then maybe username uh, let's see Merck B at Mercy Macaulay.org and then password rules 2028 which I know they changed it I also show them how they can just tap in between the columns to make the columns wider. And then I start listing other things they might have passwords for, like Teams or Edpuzzle. Um, a lot of teachers use that. Um, maybe Delta Math, because we all love Delta Math, and so on. And then I show them that for every single thing they create a password for, they can write their username and then write the password. So it's a safe way to keep it written down somewhere. At this point, I also explain to them how they can then protect this password spreadsheet. So um, we go into File, Info, Protect Workbook, Encrypt with a Password. And the girls usually seem to really like this part. They like having all their passwords written in one location. Um, so again, file, info is down here. Um, protect workbook is right here. Encrypt with a password. And then I tell them that this is important, that if they lose this password, they won't be able to open up this file again, which is problematic. <laughs> so I encourage them to uh, make a great password, and then they're good. Okay, I'm not actually going to do that right now. I also like to show them how to actually save something, so clicking on Save As. Uh, they can put it in their OneDrive. But I will tell you that sometimes it's handy to keep this file on their desktop. So sometimes they might want to save it there as well. All right. So that's that. That takes care of slide seven. And then I give them a five minute break. Um, I usually try to be very clear with it, so I would look at the clock if it's 5.59, I'd say, okay, we're going to all meet back here at 6.04. It's okay to be specific. I tell them where, where the restrooms are, how to get there, and so on. Uh, and then I really do kind of start right back up pretty close to 6.04, you know, if I've given them a five-minute break. That way, if a few are trickling in, they, they get the memo that you mean business, that you're not going to just sit and wait for everybody to come back because um, it's important. So 
uh, if they miss a minute or two, it's okay. It's, it's better than just wasting a lot of time. So then we start talking about staying organized, about bookmarking websites um, on Edge or Chrome. I kind of talk about a variety of the different web browsers that they have access to. I show them sticky notes. Um, I show them how to pin things to the taskbar down at the bottom by literally right clicking and saying pin to taskbar. Um, I make sure that they all have snip and sketch pinned to their taskbar because that's an important thing that they'll need, especially working with OneNote, to be able to take a screenshot of something or a clip of something and paste it right there into their notes. Um, I also show them how I prefer to have my web pages pinned on the side of my... I, I do my... Um, I have so many things pinned that I access often. <laughs> that I actually put it over here on the left side of my web browser, but you can also pin them going across the top. So I spend a little time talking about that, just helping them understand what they're able to do with their computer. Um, some of the things that are essential to have on the taskbar are OneNote, the desktop app, Teams, and Outlook. I think Mail comes already on here, the Mail app. Let me see if I can find that one. Yeah, it looks like this. Um, but that's not a good one to use. We want to use Outlook, so I always want to make sure that they have Outlook pulled up and not the Mail app. Uh, email is Microsoft Outlook, so we log into Outlook. I talk about how important it is to check it daily. and it prompts them to put it on their phone and this is the part that I tell them is not required but highly encouraged because let's be honest when your email is on your phone you are more likely to check your email it's just how it works that's how we're wired um, just a good good habit to have so even though it takes a little bit longer it's okay to take the time to let them put the email on their phone at this point if they're comfortable with that and if they're not allowed it's okay it's not required so some people might not even have a phone that day at the orientation it's okay they don't need to be made uh, shame on them it's okay they don't have to don't blame them it's okay that they don't have that with them uh, it's more important that they uh, have that option if they want but they don't have to do it and then I kind of give them a tour of teams um, now hopefully hopefully they will all have their computer literacy team set up before orientation i'm working with mrs wells right now about that i really hope that that's set up because it's very helpful at orientation for them to actually be able to see a working team because when they log into the teams they might not have any teams just yet they it's important to show them though um, the main teams that they need access to they're going to need to be able to know how to get to the wolf pack and then that's how they get to their wolf howl each week talk about what the wolf howl is and so on it's really important to show them that but hopefully they will all at least have their computer literacy team showing up on their list of teams and then just explain to them that each class that they're in will eventually appear. It just takes a minute for teachers to get their rosters and get all of that uploaded. So um, it'll just take time. Um, but I just kind of give them a little brief tutorial about Teams and what it is. While we're in Teams and we are in their computer literacy team, which like I said, will hopefully be set up for them because it will make this whole process so much easier. I like to show them how to go into their team, click on class notebook, see the class notebook, and then open the class notebook. Actually, this is a, a new team that I'm looking at here. Let me find an old team real quick, like this one. Okay, so here's an old team from last year. You click on Class Notebook on the left, and 
takes a minute, but it opens up on the right. And from here, you can then show them how they can click on, uh, let's see, I might need to make it bigger. If they click on editing right over here, they can click on open in desktop. Have them do that with their computer literacy notebook because then you can go on to the next slide in this presentation, which is all about OneNote, and talk about how OneNote works. Um, so it's a good time to open up OneNote, the desktop app, and show them how to open up a blank page. They should hopefully have that computer literacy notebook already opened up on the left from just having opened it in Teams. And from there, you can explain the different parts of a class notebook, how they'll see the content library, and then they'll see their own name. And that's how it works. That's how class notebook works. Um, this is also the point in the orientation that pretty exciting. I show them that they have a pen in their computer. Before this, a lot of them didn't even realize it. So I show them that it is a touch screen. I show them how the tablet actually folds around and how some people like to have it completely flat. Other people like to have it kind of tented. Um, it's just really a personal preference. And then I show them a lot of the different pens and features that are available in OneNote. Um, and how they can actually just write or how they could type if they wanted to. But OneNote is what we use to take notes here at Mercy Macaulay. At this point, we have another five minute break. Again, I'm very specific about the time. And um, some of them like to just sit and keep playing with OneNote. It's kind of a nice time to give them that little bit extra time. During these breaks, it's also a nice time to kind of troubleshoot and help kids if they're having trouble with something. Um, Sometimes you have to stop what you're doing and help them in the moment because you don't want them to fall behind, but other times it's a, it's a little thing that can wait. So I do that during the break sometimes. Okay, and then for the last session, all about the schedule. So I'm going to do a separate video about the schedule just because this one's already running at 22 minutes. Um, I'm hoping that you've run this at, at least one, one and a or 1.5. 1.75 speed so that you can get through all my notes a little bit faster than I could actually talk. But I'm going to, like I said, do a second video for this little last bit and um, I will send that one next.